today we're talking about Zoro from One Piece. And not that scene. <laughs> because today we're unboxing real swords that won't break. And we're unboxing all of Zoro's swords, and he's had way more swords than you might think. We're starting with two mystery katanas, and this sword, the Wadawichi Manji. And every battle-ready anime sword that we have comes in this sick box that actually teaches you about your sword. Now, in the One Piece live action from Netflix, Zoro has three swords that are quickly broken by a giga sword that we are going to unbox at the end of this video. Okay, here it is, and oh my goodness. It's got a cotton handle with some black gray skin. Ooh, that contrast. And then we got the white theme. Oh, dang. It looks exactly like one of those chocolate coins you'd get at Cracker Barrel. Yeah, yeah. But let's see what the blade looks like. Now, the Wado Ichimanji is actually a legendary sword that belongs to Kuina, Zoro's childhood friend and rival. After her untimely death, Zoro vowed to carry on her dream of becoming the world's greatest swordsman. This sword acts as a symbol of his promise to her. These katanas were gifted to him by Wano board swordsmith Shimotsi Katsuburo when he was a child. While not much is known about these swords, they hold sentimental value for Zoro, but clearly not too much sentimental value because he lost both of them and got the sword inside this box. The Sandai Kitetsu! Oh, yeah. Actually, we've had the dull version of this sword for quite a while, but we've never seen it sharp. So, well, let's see what it looks like. Another stand, let's just... Yeah. Ooh. Okay, why is this thing heavy? What? Okay, the handle is brown leather. On the dull version, it's just black. And this leather is like so different from all our other leather. It's like more texture. And actually, this holding it by this thing too is a very satisfying grip. Even each of these little grooves is texture. Like, is there is depth in this. That is thing. actually wild. I don't know how they put so much detail in this. But let's see what the blades got oh, going yeah. on. What? Okay. I can't. Dude, okay, yes. yes. But in the light, this blade looks dirty. It is filthy. <laughs> okay, looking at this blade, in certain lighting it's blue, and in certain lighting it's black. I mean, this thing's like a chameleon. That's crazy. So it's got blue, gold, brown, red, and black. What a sword, dude. So far, this one is definitely my favorite, and I don't think any of these next swords are going to look good. So I'm saying, if you put this over a rustic fireplace, it would be awesome. Also, I feel like the entire handle actually looks old. Like, this looks like an artifact that you could find in a museum or a party. Yeah. So after losing his original swords, Zoro acquired the Sandai Kitetsu. This is actually a cursed sword known for its exceptional sharpness. But then Zoro overcame the curse and uses this sword in his battles. How sharp actually is it? Let's see. And next up we have Mikashi. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. And the stand? Oh yeah, easy. Right there? Beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, let's look at this sword. Okay, this one also looks very piratey too. It is a very piratey sword. It's not too flashy. Like, you could hang this in your grandma's house and it would look alright. I'm a big fan of these really thinly wrapped handles. They feel really good. Okay, but why is the Saya so black? I mean, this is literally the world's blackest black. It's just that it's glossy. Nice, simplistic, two-tone sword, but what does the blade look like? Ready? Let's see it. Oh! This is what? Sick. Bro, that looks so good. That is wild. I was not, I was not ready look for the this. color on the inside of this clean blade. I mean, that is wavy. I mean, this sword looks so good. That teal color... Where did it come from? I mean, the whole <laughs> yeah. sword is black, and out of nowhere they said, oh, yeah. It's literally it. business in the front, party on the inside, yeah. and it's, I love it. Like, when I first unsheathed it, I was like, what on earth is this? I was not ready for it. Bashi was a sword Zoro acquired. This sword actually possesses the ability to slice through steel effortlessly. Okay, this sword is almost there, but I still like Sendai Kitetsu better. I'm gonna go with this one, because the unpainted edge is way too great. But I think the next sword might also be Kelly's favorite. Let's see what happens. Next up is Shusui. Okay, let's open it up. Ooh. Oh, oh, this one is sick. I like the vibrance of this bad yeah, one. Why is it so vibrant? Another stand. Okay, I don't know how they do it, but I swear all of the One Piece swords are the most detailed swords that we have. I've noticed that all of them have this like brass theme to them, and I kind of like it. Oh yeah. This just like feels Dirty. Like this is hefty. Flower looking Suba. I don't yeah. know the story on that. That Suba looks like Patrick's pants. I love it. The sword is also such a deep black. I don't know how they get it this way. Like it looks Agreed. so good. But let's see the blade. Ready? Blade looks like. Woo! That 
thing is spiky. Look at this. The spiky red. Oh what? My what the? What the Johnny Test blade? Zoro obtained Shusui, a famous black sword originally wielded by the samurai Ryuma. Zoro claimed the sword after defeating its current owner, the zombie Ryuma. <laughs> Shusui is a highly prized and powerful blade. The only thing you have to defeat to claim this sword is your mom's wallet when you steal her credit card and go to minikatana.com and buy it. In this next sword, we actually have two different versions. And can you guess what it is? This one's purple and that one's black. Let's see it. Ready? Oh, one, two, three! Whoop. On plastic? Oh yeah! Ready? Okay, so here's the question though. Which one's better? I honestly like the black one better. I was the same. I agree, black. Let me just say that like, glossy black looks stupid good, and it looks better than yours. There's so many colors happening on this thing. We okay. got purple, gold, the black and red on this bad boy though, looks crazy. It's too bad this is fake. So the reason that there are two versions is because this is how people thought it looked when it was in the manga, and it's just black and white. But once it came out in the anime, it was actually purple. But what do the blades look like? Are they the same? Ooh. Oh yes. Okay, this is actually fire. All right, plastic. Yeah, baby. All right. I mean, shoot, I'm still a fan. These look so good. I mean, these ones are so colorful. I think way more colorful than all the other ones. Actually, I've never seen these two swords displayed right next to each other, and they actually look pretty good. Yeah, they look sick. Yeah. If I were gonna buy one, I wouldn't be able to choose, and I would buy both. That's true. Every One Piece sword has this nice little brass color, and they work so well together. That's an interesting thing about the Inma swords, is that I feel like the detail goes from tip of the Saya to tip of the butt cap. In the Wano County arc, Zoro acquired Inma, an incredibly powerful sword made by the legendary swordsmith, Shimotsuki Kozaburo. Now it's time for the Giga Sword. Oh, okay, that is the biggest box that we have. It is unmaneuverable. But Ooh. let's see what's inside. Ready? This is Mihawk's Yoru. This sword is responsible for slicing two of Zoro's swords. And this replica is the same size as the real deal. I mean, this is the most piratey sword that they have. How heavy is this? Built like a pirate. Oh, my shoulders. It's so, like, the gems, they glow. They do very much glow. And, like, the butt cap dude is very glow. All right, let's see that blade that we use for war. Ooh. Oh, I'd go to war with that bad boy. That is pretty. I mean, this thing is big, but not as big as the smile on your face when you subscribe. 